Hi, Vanessa here and welcome to my channel. Today, I wanna to share and explore with you my favorite reading app, Libby. Libby, formerly known as Overdrive, is a free app that you can download on your phone, tablet, or PC to get instant free access to digital books and audiobooks. And how it does this is that Libby actually partners up with your local library through Overdrive and it gives you access to their online database of digital books and audiobooks. So once you download the Libby app and input your library card, you'll have access to your library's online database. So what I'm saying is that Libby is a virtual library of your local library. And if you don't get a chance to go to the library, you can download digital books and audiobooks straight from your device. The great news is if you have a Kobol or Kindle e-reader, that is also compatible with Libby as well. So anything that you check out on Libby, you can sync it to your e-reader and be able to read on both devices. And if you're familiar with Kobo and Kindle stores, the process of looking for books and audiobooks is the same. The only difference is, is that because it's free, Libby does have limitations on how many licenses of copies they can give of the eBooks and audiobooks. So you might find yourself just waiting for some of the titles that you wanna read versus just purchasing them on your Kindle or Kobo store. So today I want to give you a tour of the Libby app and show you some of my favorite features. You can download it on Google Play Store if you have Android or your Apple Store if you're on an iPhone. So once you have downloaded the app, you can go and open it. You'll want to start off with the top right hand corner of the Libby icon and head down to where you see add a library. Click that and enter your local library name, city or zip code and it will list um, some libraries that are near you. You can choose the one you want from the list and it will prompt you to enter your library card. Once you do, it will link your card to the online database of the library and you're ready to start checking out digital and audiobooks. Now, if we hit back, we're at our starting page and this is a great place to be. I want to highlight some of my favorite features of this page and how to use them. So you'll notice at the top, it says search for a book. It's perfect if you know exactly what you're looking for, the title or the author. To the bottom, you'll see library, which is the page that we are currently on now. And beside that, this center icon will take you to the book that you are currently reading and to the right bottom shelf is where you'll be managing your loans and their holds. So if we start at the top, we can search for a book. I'm going to search for Lisa Gardner and all of her books will show up on this list. It'll let me know that there are 26 digital books and four audiobooks available. And if I decide to borrow a book from her, so I can see the ratings for this book, um, the cover page to see if it's the right one that I'm looking for, I can read a sample, and if it all looks good, I'm gonna hit borrow. So it lets me know that I have this title for 21 days on my device. And also currently, I already have seven books checked out out of the 10 that I could possibly check out. So I think we're all good, I'll hit borrow. Now right away, I can start opening my book and reading it. I can keep browsing or go to my shelf um, to manage my other loans. So boring an audiobook is the same process as boring a book. The only difference is that you'll see this audio text and these earphones. You can hit borrow or play sample. Once you borrow it, you can open it directly and it will play directly in the Libby app. You can set it um, for bedtime or the pace of the book or even skip chapters as well. But say you don't know what you wanna read and you want some inspirations, we can begin to scroll down the library page and you can see here it already highlights some titles for you, um, just added books, but I really like to hang out in this section. It has what's new in digital books and audiobooks, what's popular and what's available. And this is important because what's popular is not always what's available. So in the popular section, we can see that most of the titles have place hold beside it. Um, and if we click the calendar icon, we can see that it's about 20 weeks for this title and some other useful additional information as well. And every book will be different. For example, this title is a six months wait. But if you get lucky and you have this four leaf clover notification, it lets you know that this book is popular and it's available right now, but it acts as a super loan where you have to return it within seven days and there are no renewal opportunities. So say you want to 
read something right away. You'll head to the What's Available section and click Available Books. And now you can see that all these titles are available for borrow. So I would go through the same process and click Borrow to start reading right away. You can also change your preferences and filter out uh, format, language, availability, and sort by to narrow down your searches to what you're looking for. And if that's not enough to inspire you, if you continue to scroll down, you'll see that it has all the genres that you can browse from and to narrow down your search. Or they even put together often fun categories like beach books or haunting horror novels. The list is endless and I'm sure you'll find an inspiration for a book to read. Say that you borrowed all the books that you wanted, you can head down to your shelf here and you will be able to see all the digital books and audiobooks that you have taken out, all the holds that you currently have, and if you scroll down here, I'll let you know the books that you're currently reading. So I have the option to open the book, manage my loan, it lets me know when it's due and how much progress I've made into the book. If I click manage loan, it will let me know that this title expires on August 23rd, which means that it will be returned to the online database and I will no longer have access to it. On the flip side, if you finish it early, you can also return early as well. But the great thing about this is that there are no more late fees. It will return it automatically for you. As well, you can see that these are the books that I currently have on my shelf, and it lets you know how many people are waiting for this title as well. So this helps if you want to prioritize your reading, and if you're finished, you can return it early for the next person to get it. So this section lets me know all the titles that I'm waiting for, and it arranges it from shortest to longest time as well. If I choose no longer to have this book on hold, I can go to manage hold and either suspend it or cancel it. So now that we've finished checking out our titles, we can get to the fun part and start reading. So you'll want to click on your center icon. It will bring you to the book directly and you can start reading right away or you can make changes such as font size, font, and your display settings to match your reading preferences. As you can see, the Libby app is very user-friendly and attractive while making it very easy to browse your favorite digital reads and audiobooks. So that is the Libby app. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Comment below and let me know what your favorite feature of Libby is. I know that nothing will ever replace going to the library, but by having this app, I find that it's very innovative, intuitive, and it gives us a chance to read where we want and how we want, but for free. As always, I wish you happy reading on the Libby app, hopefully, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.